Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. So as we wait for everyone to kind of pop on and join us, we're just gonna take a few minutes here for that. But in the meanwhile, I would like to know if you guys have ever had Noguchi Sake or Noguchi Naohiko Sake Institute Sake. So please put it in the chat. Um, make sure it's addressed to all panelists and attendees so everybody can see. Victor says, yes. I wanna know which one you tried though, Victor. Tell me which ones. <laughs> where and when, like, uh, or what, what sake did you try and where did you try it? We have uh, not yet, but excited to try. Will says he's had the hon Honjozo. Victor says Honjozo in Hawaii and the number one in Japan. I'm thinking that's a limited edition, very nice. And Dominique says not yet, but hoping to get some from Chusake soon, very nice. David says yes, several, okay. Very lucky if you've tried several of them. Don't forget to change it to all panelists and attendees, guys, or else uh, I look like I'm crazy and I'm, <laughs> I'm talking to people that don't exist. <laughs> all right, we're just gonna wait a couple minutes <clears throat> as everybody gets logged in and settled. Everybody who's just joined, please let us know in the chat. Remember to type it to all panelists and attendees if you've ever had Noguchi Naohiko Sake Institute Sake, and where did you try it? I think I've only actually had the Honjozo, which is fantastic. And I did like a whole presentation on it. So <laughs> um, Mateo says hi to Gordon from Santa Hello, Fe. Hello, Mateo, <laughs> my Santa Fe friends. Oh, Skylar says she's had it in Ishikawa and on the ANA business class. Very nice. That's going to pop up a little later. <laughs> um, JG says, yes, a few times last winter in Japan. The Ayama was really cool. Skylar also says Ayama is um, their favorite. And Sebastian says, hello there. Tried it with Gordon, of course. And Heijin says she had it in Kanazawa at a little mom and pop bar, like a sake bar. Very nice, that's cool. I love it when little, little sake bars carry really cool stuff. All right, okay. We are three minutes in, so I'm hoping most of everybody is logged in um, and let's just get started. So hi everybody, my name is Ida Vong. I am a sake specialist for Sake School of America as well as Mutual Trading Company um, and Today, we are doing a brewery spotlight on the Noguchi Naohiko Sake Institute. <laughs> um, so just to give you guys a quick overview about what's gonna happen, we're basically gonna be, uh, how do you say, introduced to the brewery by the Noguchi team. We're gonna be seeing a lot of videos, a lot of awesome slides and photos um, as we discuss about the location, the actual brewery, the toji, the philosophy, what's going on now, and of course, their sake. Um, we're also gonna have a Q&A at the end, so please be sure to keep your questions in mind. You can also use the Q&A function so we can keep track of things a little bit better. Um, we tend to maybe miss questions if you put it in the chat, but we'll do our best to be diligent. Um, and today we are joined by Toshio Ueno. So he is the founder of Sake School of America. He is, or co-founder of Sake School of America. And he is also our lead instructor. And he was actually recently appointed the Japanese Cuisine Goodwill Ambassador. So congratulations to him. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys, thank you. And we are also joined by the Noguchi team. So we have Kyuma Asano-san, the owner of the brewery. <laughs> And we also have Takashi Iwai-san, the marketing manager. Thank you, hi. <laughs> and we are also joined by Gordon Hetty. So he, 
actually has way too much to introduce. So he's going to introduce himself. So go ahead and take it away, Gordon Sun. Thank you, Ada. And thank you, Toshio, for all that you've been doing for us. Uh, we really appreciate you, not just as uh, partners, but as educators and helping people understand this. Um, I'm sitting right now in our tasting room. And behind me, you can see a reflection of the rice fields behind the sake brewery. And to my right, this is the, uh, the press. It's a Yubuta press. And it happens that the brewery workers are maintaining and cleaning it. So you may see people walking behind me during the presentation. And welcome everyone around the world. I'm so excited to be here today. I am the brand ambassador for this fine brewery. And today I'm so glad to present our brewery and our sakes to America and to those of you around the world. Um, about myself, my passion for sake started 30 years ago in college when I gave English lessons to Japanese students studying abroad. They had no money, but we exchanged sake and that started my passion. After college, I helped start a sake brewery in Oregon. And when I divested from this brewery in 2012, I went to Japan to start brewing sake, first in Kyushu, then in Tokai. But the highlight of my career, if, if not my life, was working as an apprentice Kurobito for one year. Uh, a Kurobito is a production sake brewery worker. And I did this working for Mr. Noguchi. If you are new to sake, the master brewer is a toji. It's a brewmaster and the leader of production. And our toji is like no other. In the, in, in the opinion of so many people, including many experts, he's the greatest. So uh, we've already met uh, Asano-san and Iwai-san. So I think this is a good chance to begin our presentation. I'd like to show you an introduction movie uh, taken a couple of years ago, which shows you uh, the brewery nestled in the foothills of Mount Hakusan. Uh, Iwai-san, if you could start the movie. And I might voice over here and there. Thank you, Iwai-san. 
so you've seen just a brief overview of uh, where we're working. It really is a special place. This is uh, Mr. Naohiko Noguchi, known as the legendary master brewer or by some as the god of sake brewing. He became a toji in 1961, that's 60 years ago, and has numerous awards and honors, including a staggering 27 gold medals at the Japan Sake Awards. And being the only toji identified by the government as a master craftsman of the modern world. Furthermore, Noguchi Toji earned the Medal of Honor with yellow ribbon from the Emperor of Japan through the Japanese government. An award, which I quote, is awarded to individuals who, through their diligence and perseverance, while engaging in their professional activities, became public role models. Uh, this is part of why he has spent more than 70 years of his life brewing sake, listening to the opinions of his customers and refining his own craft. The characteristics of the sake produced by Noguchi Toji have changed with the times as the generations of customers have changed. This new sake brewery, next slide, Yuai san. This new sake brewery, as you can see here, was established in the winter of 2017 and is one of the newest breweries in Japan of which there's about 1,700 companies with a license. Mr. Noguchi was recruited by Asano-san to lead our design and production. So to be clear, Noguchi Toji is not the owner of the brewery, which is the common scenario in Japan. Here's the clean water that's flowing all around the brewery, it seems. Noguchi Toji fell in love with the beautiful nature of Komatsu City, Ishikawa Prefecture, and the mountainous area with clear water. So Toji, Toji-san himself chose this place. Let's talk about the water. The water comes from a well deep under the brewery. It is considered slightly soft water, especially given that we are in the foothills. I think that's surprising to some. It is part of the Hakusan water supply as Mount Haku is so nearby. Hakusan is uh, one of the three holy mountains of Japan. It's really a special place. And incidentally, here we are. This scene is taken from across the street from the brewery. The stone quarry from across the street is also considered special and was used in the construction of the Japanese diet, the actual parliament building uh, over 70 years ago. And next slide, thank you. Komatsu, it takes about 20 minutes by taxi from Komatsu station and it's 30 minutes from the Komatsu airport. If you were flying um, from Tokyo to Komatsu, it's about an hour. So I think it's very convenient. Next slide. About the brewery. Noguchi Naohiko Sake Institute was named after Noguchi and was established with the vision of passing on to the next generation the skills the spirit and the way of life of Noguchi Toji. Uh, next slide. Noguchi oversaw everything from the design stage. And today our brewery fulfills uh, Toji-san's model of a sake brewery from scratch. Next slide. Here's the gallery. This is so unique. Uh, we have a gallery at the brewery where you can see a timeline from Noguchi Toji's grandfather days. And that's a long time ago. So the background of Noguchi Toji 
and his seven years of making sake. So please visit the gallery when you come. And from the windows of the gallery, next slide, guests can glimpse the sake brewery workers at work. This is the shikomigura. Here we have many tanks of uh, fermenting mash. Now let's talk a little bit about the inside of the brewery. We have this beautiful picture of Bartoji on the wall. This is our brewing room. And there are some sentences written onto the walls in Japanese that's quite touching for us and gets to the heart of how this great man thinks. I would like to translate some of them for you. Next slide, thank you. Noguchi says, with such a thing as sake brewing, if we think, I got it, it lacks understanding. So we cannot absolutely know something if we begin with this uh, false thinking. Profound. Next slide. What is important for sake brewing is a passion for things because microorganisms do not say anything. We must be completely honest. I cannot definitely succeed if I deceive myself. Even if I work my fingers to the bone, I must make adjustments. I adapt to aspergillus. I adapt myself to yeasts. I cannot make a good sake without feeling like that. Sake will never engage me if I force on it my own circumstances. And finally, the third one, I want to make sake, which people cannot help but to heavenly sigh after taking a sip. So the brewery workers and I, um, we love working in this room and we love the inspiration provided for our toji. Let's talk about our tasting room where I am right now. I'm sitting here behind the bar looking out over the rice fields that you see. This is a special tasting room inside the brewery where you can enjoy freshly made sake while enjoying this beautiful scenery. This place is designed so that the brewers can directly listen to the opinions of our customers. Uh, we also invite star chefs from around the world for special pairing courses several times a year. So when you come to Japan, when it's safe to travel, please think about making an appointment to visit our tasting room. Now, um, at this point, we have another event movie which highlights the tasting room. And if I could have ui song start that and share the sound. I'll be speaking over it. These events are held two to four times a year. It allows for gourmets to come and have specially prepared courses using local ingredients. Thank you, Iwaisan. Now uh, let's talk about the present state of operations at the brewery today. Um, as of last week, the brewery steamed the last batch of rice for this brewing season. Thank you, Iwaisan. And now there is still work to be done but step by step, after a few weeks, the brewery workers will finish pressing the final batch of sake. And here is freshly pressed sake. It goes in cloudy and it comes out clear. 
This time is really great. It's less stressful. You're not working so hard 24 hours a day, six months a row on the clock. The hours are shorter. There is cleaning and maintenance work to be done, but in a few weeks, many of the brewery workers can either transition to bottling, labeling, packaging, or they can take a much deserved vacation. Uh, next slide. Traditionally, brewery workers would return to working as farmers and fishermen, but nowadays uh, it's possible to take a rest if you need to. Uh, Artoji will return to his home in Notogi, Shikawa. There are still some tasks to be done and for the Toji to also go into the field to meet customers, but a rest, a rest for everyone, even the Toji is uh, well-deserved. Now I'd like to talk about Yamahai. Next slide, please. The Yamahai method of making sake is now a symbol of the Noto Toji as well as Noguchi Toji personally. Compared to the current mainstream brewing methods, it requires about two weeks more for lactic acid fermentation, but can brew sake with a deeper flavor and stronger acidity. Uh, in the 1960s, when he was in his late 20s, Noguchi Toji inherited the techniques from his teacher in Kyoto to brew a stronger tasting sake that was actually in demand by customers in Ishikawa. And I think this is significant. Um, Yamaha is expensive because it takes longer to brew. And as a result, it became out of favor for breweries who wanted to be more profitable. Nowadays, it can be said 9% of sake that's brewed in Japan is brewed with the Yamaha method. But if it wasn't for Noguchi Toji, that number would have been far smaller. Uh, he helped him popularize it. And the Yamaha boom can be attributed to his helping other brewers learn how to do it and promoting the virtues of it. Now, here I'm going to ask Oeno san who I consider like a sensei to me, <laughs> if we could review the three main styles of creating the shubo or the starting batch of brewing, I would love it, Oeno san if you could explain. Isn't this great, everyone? This is a great session uh, they are doing, and I'm so delighted to have the seminar. And thank you for giving me a chance to talk about uh, the shubo. You know, as you know, there is uh, two kinds of shubo or mm. more. Uh, basically, it's a kimoto style or sokujo style. And some of you have studied uh, kimoto is the one that, that uh, natural lactic bacteria uh, you wait for uh, when you mash the sake, I uh, mash the rice, and that's kimoto. And then the other one, it's, you know, new one uh, technique came out was that, that you can add lactic acid at the beginning so that you can protect them and you don't have to do the Yamaoroshi process. And then uh, in Kimoto style, you have two types, right? One is Kimoto. Do you do this, you know, Yamaoroshi mashing the rice process uh, called Yamaoroshi? That's uh, is kimo, uh, in the Kimoto style. And then you have uh, Yamaha style. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the difference between Kimoto and uh, Kimoto style and Sokujo. As you can see right here, uh, let me see if I can use this one. You can see right here uh, on the first one on the right hand on the Kimoto section, uh, you see a Yamaoroshi process. That is the process you do master rice uh, many hours in, uh, in one, one night and it takes a lot of uh, labor there. And comparing to that, you have Sokujo. You can see the red uh, highlighted circle in the bottom, uh, uh, bottom side in the chart. And you can see that orange uh, bottle that is uh, liquid acid you can buy and you add it to that to 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 the mash 
Why we do this? Because uh, the biggest difference between other drinks like wine, uh, sake rice does not contain any acid, right? And it's vulnerable to uh, bacteria. So you have to have a higher level of acidity in, in the mash. And that's why we use lactic acid, okay? Can I see, uh, can I go to the next uh, uh, slide, please? And then uh, this is how it looks like uh, Kimoto style and, uh, uh, and Yamhai, the difference. Kimoto style, as I said, you mash the rice and waiting uh, for lactic, uh, lactic bacteria to harbor into the, the uh, rice, uh, steam rice and, uh, and uh, water so that uh, uh, it can be in high in, uh, acid. And you do this, you see the number there, nine hours, five hours, three hours later, you do so many times. And then Yamaha, uh, that's different. You don't do that Yama Oroshi process as you see in the uh, top corner of that picture. You don't do anything. There is an old saying in Yamaha, don't disturb the mash. Let the koji do their job, meaning the koji, let it do their job, will automatically, uh, you know, uh, ferments and also saccharifies, meaning convert the starch to sugar. And then natural lactic acid, uh, lact acid bacteria will comes down to those tank. And then you scoop the liquid from the bottom and a pour over uh, the mash. That's how what Yamaha is. And that's it. And yeah, I, I, I put the name of Pijaja and Montage because some of the people, you guys are wine uh, people and <laughs> that's punching down or you know pumping over. That's the difference. Uh, I, I use this analogy for uh, wine people. Thank, Thank you, you. oeno san Thank you, Gordon. Yeah, that was fantastic. Uh, now I'd like to talk about Daiginjo. Uh, next slide, please. Daiginjo, uh, this had previously been made only for submission to the annual Japan Sake Awards. But after winning his uh, second consecutive gold prize, Noguchi Toji's Ginjo shoe was marketed vigorously for the first time in Japan at a time when Ginjo was almost never made available to the public. This is part of the Ginjo boom. And for sake lovers who enjoy Junmai Ginjo or Ginjo sakes, this is the genesis of it, according to me, according to many. Ginjo sake, which Noguchi Toji was first to market, was actually at first not popular. But after it was aged, it became reputed as an unprecedented delicacy among sake lovers. No one had simply had sake like this before. Now, during this time, Noguchi Toji won the top prize, the gold award, for 12 consecutive years at the Japan Sake Awards. Uh, for all the sake breweries, thousands today, tens and thousands over the last 100 years. This is something that has only been done a few times. As far as the timeline goes, when Ginjo started to take off in 1980, some university professors and cultural people of Tokyo, impassioned by Noguchi Toji's Ginjo, they started promoting it. It became a hit. This led to the Ginjo boom, which spread across Japan. Let's take some tasty notes here. I have some tasty notes to share. Next slide, please. Let's see. We wait for those slides to come up. Um, which one is your favorite, Gordon? It's difficult choosing amongst your children. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that the Hanjozo is what I like to drink every day, but on a special mm -hmm. occasion, um, the Daiginjo, and the most versatile is what we're looking at here. 
the Yamahai Miyama Nishiki. Um, let me first say that Noguchi can brew sake from many different kinds of rice and through his networking experiences. Uh, most of the sakes are said to have been made with these popular rice types, the first of which is Miyama Nishiki. Originally procured from Nagano, this rice is a hardy breed. It grows well in cold weather and it's resistant to high winds. Sake brewed with this tends to produce clean sake with a smooth texture. It's also notable for having a ricey, grainy profile with a muted aromatics. So there's not as much aroma as you might find with other types of sake. And again, I want to mention our Yamaha styles in general are the most versatile in terms of service and serving at a wide variety of temperatures. Uh, Noguchi was one of the first Toji to promote Yamaha Daiginjo style. And these sakes can be enjoyed at uh, warmed room temperature or chilled. So if you like versatility, I recommend this Miyama Nishiki. Now the notes themselves a touch of anise and some grassy notes. At first taste, something approaching creme brulee, then it evolves into something almost vegetal. Like most of our sakes, even though I made them, they are so elusive to describe. And that finish, it's almost zesty. I enjoy sipping this sake with cheese, such as mimolette or gouda. And this sake is served in business class on international flights by ANA, all Nippon Airlines. In addition to other seasonal selections, Anna has been serving our sake for a few years now. This speaks to our quality as they are really only serving the best to their passengers. Next slide, please. Junmai Daiginjo, Yamada Nishiki. We source our Yamada Nishiki from Hyogo, the birthplace of Yamada Nishiki. Uh, this rice has the greatest market share due to its ideal characteristics for brewing sake. This is an okute type of rice. It refers to the rice breeds that ripen slowly. They are planted and harvested late. And here we have larger grains than normal with this rice. Sake made with Yamada Nishiki tends to be fragrant, fruity, elegant, and complex. With this sake, I have bright, juicy notes with a refreshing acidity. Think tropical fruits such as papaya, lychee, and a touch of pineapple. There is a very pleasing lingering aftertaste, which is uh, gently sour and fresh. It has a refined taste and is served to first-class passengers on ANA's international flights. Um, when we see Daiginjo, um, it's considered by many to be the most expensive or the most super premium of all of the sakes. And when we polish the rice down, uh, for a variety of reasons, it makes such an elegant sake. Now let's go to limited edition. Ambrosia. Uh, I helped Noguchi Toji make this sake, and it's very special to me. Instead of blending different batches, this sake represents the single best batch of the year out of dozens, as hand chosen by the Toji himself. This sake features fresh and sweet scents of fruit, flower, and herbs, such as lychee, violet and mint. You'll notice the packaging is a little interesting. This is a stylus uh, asymmetrical bottle designed by Mr. Toshio Ohi, who is one of the most prominent artists of Ishikawa. Only 5,500 bottles of this sake are released. Now I'd like to go to um, Gohyaku Mengoku. Let's talk about our Honjozo. This type of rice comes from Hokuriku, our local region. It's a wase type of rice, which was developed in the mid fifties. 
Wase means planted and harvested early and it ripens quickly. This rice is sturdier against Japan's colder climate areas such as where we are in Ishikawa. The grains are smaller and harder and they don't break up as easily in the Maromi. Sake made with uh, wase rice tends to feature a lighter flavor. And we tend to get ours from Ishikawa and Niigata. Its small grains, however, make it more likely to crack during the polishing process of milling large sake grains into smaller ones. We have large grains with a large inner core that is close to pure starch. And this sake tends to produce clean and light bodied sake, this rice does, but the large core um, does prevent it be, from being polished into something like a daikinjo. And this taste is compact, clean, and a lighter sake. For my tasty notes, again, this is my everyday sake. And of these four sakes uh, at True Sake in San Francisco right now, um, it's the only one I did not personally make for this release to the USA, but I still love it so much. It's a balanced, even sake that refreshes and surprises. Notes of Sancho, when I taste it, sometimes I have so much activity in my, in my taste buds that my lips are numb. When it approaches room temperature, I get a sweetness out of it that reminds me of butterscotch. And at any temperature, there can be minerality find here, which is surprising and refreshing. For food pairing, I enjoy this with raw oysters. <laughs> um, here I also want to say, I feel that all of our sakes taste as if they belong in the same family, or at least were made at the same brewery. All of them strike very near the center of the bullseye. Now, uh, this is a good time to show a movie that we made the other day. This is an interview with Noguchi Toji. So, Oeno san, when you're ready, please start the movie. あの、私は、うん、これからの取り組みは自然を求めて、え、山に上がっていきたいと私は思っている民家の真ん中とか、それから自動車の廃墟集まるところにはあの、綺麗なお酒ができたいっていう、え、したら山をやんであげるんです。
が一番感じるんじゃないかなと思っております。うん、そうですね、私は、うん、まだあの未知なんですけど、未知数なんですけど、うん、まあ、日本の人たちの市場に、それから好みというのは大体あのお聞きしながら、ここまでやってきたんですけれども。あの海外というのはまだ未知数で、えー、お客さんの意見も聞きながらその国その国の、うん、食事というのを合体要するにあの食事をいただきながら酒を飲めるような酒そういうものを、うん、やられて作ろうとしてるわけですけども、うん、食生活は日本とは全然異なった生活、みんな油のもんとか、よく料理が多いわけですね。それに合わせるには、ヤマハイ作りという、ね、単独いた酒で、食中心のことで、埋めるような酒で、勝負しようかなという考えでおるんです。<笑>うん、そうですね。うん、できれば若い人たちにこれからの将来性もありますし、私みたいなもう愛のない人間と違って若い人たちとなるべく日本酒の業界で育て上げて、これからの将来の日本酒を担っていただこうと思って若い人たちと採用したんです。まあみんな関心を持って一緒に今年あたりの日あの国の中で四人が新人だったんですけども、そういうふうに頑張ったら、だいぶ、お、うん、やる気になって、あの、いくら、あの、ゲストに関心を持ってきたな、という、楽しみをしております。あとに続く、うん、本当に、若い人たちをね、育てて、はい、あの、早く、日本式業界にも、向こうの明るさが見えるようにしていきたいな、と思っております。はい、あのこれはどれだけ年越えても一点一点が勉強なんですそれで酒造りのそういう仕込みがもう原料が違う、うん、違って気候に取材されて毎年変わって変わった原料を使わなきゃならんということで本当に一年一点があの勉強ですもうあ案じて酒造りができるということはもうないなあな感じです。<笑>いやあの目標は一人でも多くの人に海外の人にも日本酒はうまいなという感じを持っていただくようなものを作って海外にどんどんと出して海外の人たちも喜んでもらうそういう、うん、酒を作りをしたいなと思っております。<laughs> yeah. Well, don't worry, the real long s t a i is coming soon.、Uh, he will, <laughs> and、uh, he will answer the question with、uh, Gravito too. So don't go away. He's coming. Yeah. Iwai、e、san has stepped away for a moment. But、uh, before Iwai e san comes back on camera,、uh, Ada or Toshio, do you have any comments or any、uh, feedback about the presentation in terms of questions or opinions? Um, I think everybody thought it was amazing and very beautiful.、Um, for those of us in Japan, is it possible to visit the gallery now? So, is it possible to visit the brewery now? I guess.、Um, question. Uh, the, the, the taste room is closed at the moment.、Uh, so, we, we're not taking appointments right now. But th- that situation is always being monitored with public health in mind. So, when, when it's safe to bring people here, we will certainly do it, but I don't know when that'll be. Okay. So, like, there's no way for them to see、uh, the wall with the quotes, I think, well, is what they meant. When they visit the brewery, they can see that wall from our gallery. But、okay. in, terms of, in terms of making an appointment, we're not making appointments for the tasting room at this time. And the gallery is also closed to the public. So, We, we, we can't accept visitors for safety reasons. There you go. Gordon, do you know、um, how they're going to announce that on their website? Yes. Well, we'll mention how people can interact with the, 
with the Sakagura at the end, we have a slide that gives us okay, the okay. email address. Great, 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 great. Yeah. And welcome. Here we have our Toji. <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, UISON is going to assist with the translation. So, for Ueno san and Ada, if you have some special questions uh, for the Toji, please select a few. Yes, and, uh, uh, I, have, I have one question. Uh, Ui san, uh, what is the most important part of Yamaha? Natural environment is most important. Do you imitate no natural environment? あの、我々が言う乳酸菌が30何種類も検査されておりますあの、これは形変わっていますけど、2種類。それを例えばま、温度によってその近代を有料に関係で2種類を重用して山灰の3号をまず作るわけです。低灰温という、あの、水素用濃度の加工はあの、あの、食上物の場合は乳酸を溶かして、
Sonun Robert'ın sakıva sonun dünya çabuğa ayrıca kahrede ano tutte tekeşteki ne? Sonun nutka sarardı. Çoto sorun ili ano kankeşte. So this year is what was the biggest challenge this year with the rice, especially rice. お米で今期のお酒造りで一番こうま苦労したこととかちょっと変わっていたことありますかはいありますもう水を吸い終わりにですねはいで酒造り工事造りの一番条件のいいやつは中が水分が入っていて中がふんわりして外が乾きがいい
感じにて、振ってみて、感じてもらわなかったんだけど、なかなかそれが<笑>食わなくて、言葉だけ聞いて、ああ、分かった分かったって感じてみると、現物見られちゃったら、振ってみなかったら、本当のことは分からないんですよね。うん、けどもなかなかそこまで、当時は、もう一日に何回でもなく、あの、もろやって、あの、工事になる状態をずっと完璧に取るんですけどもなかなかそこまで出てくれないですね。<笑><笑> okay.、Uh, maybe he is doing the traditional approach, but、uh, especially,、uh, well, actually, the Kurabito is already understand the theory of brewing sake. But the、uh, most important thing s is not, uh, uh, cannot understand by verbal communication. So, especially, for example, when he is in Kojimuro,、uh, he will eat koji or steamed rice to make sure that how much、uh, moisture inside or how the taste is like. Or the smell is like. So he eats, and the Kurabito also eats, and share the result all the time. That's how he is、uh, rectoring <laughs> his Kurabito. Yeah. Great answer. Yeah, yeah great answer. You, you try the same, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes、uh, sense. I, I, I'm sorry, just as a Kurabito, we, we can learn by watching. So,、um, you, you pay attention to the people who are senior to you on your team. And then, if there's any question about what to do, you know, in the moment it gets figured out. Before the day, we have breakfast together. Lunch time, we have lunch together. Dinner time, we have dinner together for 200 days in a row. So, there's no question about what needs to be done because we spend so much time together, we become like a family. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of like the same as if somebody asks you, like, what does an orange taste like? It's like you can't really describe it exactly. Like, they just have to try it themselves, right? Yeah. All right.、Um, maybe But you, you, more... you, you can give somebody ideal sake or close to ideal and say, this is what we're trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.、Um, so, kind of piggybacking off that previous question.、Um, Like, who is allowed to study at the institute? Like, how do you pick the Kurabito?、Mm-hmm. Kurabito を面接とかして、mm-hmm. えー、選ぶとき、mm-hmm. えー、どういった基準で選んでますかいや、あの、やりきりですね。酒造りを自分で学んで、酒造りの当時になってという欲を持った人間を選んでるんですね。欲のないものはダメです。<laughs> <laughs> Only motivated person. <laughs> yeah, and people who want to be、uh, Toji. Yeah. Motivated. I, I want to add something here, Ada.、Uh, I want people watching this to understand how physically exhausting this is.、Um, I thought I was in pretty good shape. And after six months, I went from just over 200 pounds to 158 pounds. And that's a lot of weight to lose. I haven't been 158 pounds since I was 11 years old. So to lose that kind of weight in six months through hard work, and I could eat and drink as much as I wanted to,、um, you need people who are exceptionally strong, not just a body, but in mind and heart. And that is really a prerequisite, in addition to having the dream to be the Toji. Um, since we're getting close to six here, maybe we can end off with、uh, two more questions for Noguchi Toji, and then the rest of them maybe we can answer without him.、Um, so there's a good question here that, that asks Does he worry about the impact of global environment changes, or like, I guess, global warming,、um, mm. and the future of sake production? あの今
、えー、地球温暖化になっていて、はいはい、でそれで、まあ、今お酒造りで、まあ、苦労してるところもあると思うんですけど、はい、今後の将来のお酒造りに対して、はい、あのちょっと何て言うかこう問題視してることっていうのはありますかいやー問題視はまあいろいろありますけども。あまあ、一番原点は米作りあの、要するに原料米をど,こどうして安定して同じものを作るかということが、まず一つ大事なことです。けれども、麹作りなんかでもね、分かっていることは、もう値段的に、あの科学的に分かっていることは、酵素の蓄積なんです。三大酵素値で言いますと、麹には麹菌によって、酵素を作らせる、ロテアでタンパクを分解する酵素、それからあのデンプンを一時分解するアルファアメラズという酵素と、それから中間にのイゲスリンになったあの中間糖をもう一つブドウ糖に変えるグリコアメラズという三大酵素の酵素に求められてし、一番の主体がそれなんですけれども、それ以上に、あの、こうしていくのは、酒の風味を作る原点になるんです。だから、うん、酵素ばかり、ちあの、若い人たちは、あの、主力に感じて、酵素を買ってきて、うん、こうじきを、こうじを作らずに、うん、酵素を作るなんて、やってみるとね、全然風味がないですね。酒の申しの風味というのは、まだまだ分解、細かく分解していかなかったら、味がわからない。今の、なあの分析に出てくるのはアルコールとメーターと酸とアミノ酸なんです。それ以外の生物の細かい生物がこっちの日本酒の味を決めてるんです。そこからところを細かく、うん、これから分かっていくようになれば合成で<笑>できるようにもな,なる。それが一番の理想なんですけどそこまではなかなか、えー、まだまだ遠いと思うんです。その原料を米を使って分解、工事の分解されて、その分解の異常にまだ、この酒の風味を工事に作らせて、あの、溶解し、あの、酒にする。その深みの発展は、その酵素以外の工事に作った味なんです。そこのところに一番難しいところなんです。ただ、科学的に出てこない数字であって、下には人間の下っていうのは本当にあの敏感で感じるんですね。飲む目の、飲む人の下も感じがいいんです。それで、あの、まあ、味が、まあ苦って、しかも、切れるときには、すーっと愛おしくようにあの、味が効いていく。あと、たっと切れたときには、喉が爽やかやというような、この、本当の酒の普通の人の話を私は聞きながらそれに合わせようと思って今努力してるわけですけどそういうことは酒飲めないんです<笑>だからお客さんののんびの話を聞きながらそれに合わせたあの日本酒をどう作っていくかというのが今課題の一つになっているわけです以上です<笑><笑> So、um, he's, he said, of course, global warming is uh, uh, he worried about. But the most important thing is making sake,、uh, well, maybe for, for the future.、Uh, maybe the、uh, scientists can make the sake, but in the rock. In, in, in the、uh, research center or something, but right now he、uh, said he w a n t to adjust the taste to the generation and maybe people in abroad as well. And、uh, people's、uh, tongue is very sensitive and he. Said、uh, that, but the Japanese sake only can、uh, measure by 
um, is MV and acidity and amino acidity and alcohol only for measurement, but uh, uh, people's tongue is more sensitive. So he wants to uh, find out what make the taste and what, what uh, he can do to make sake more delicious. And he is now working on, and he is working on to the future. That's the most important things. Um, but the global warming is also, but he need to adjust his way to right. global warming as well. All right. Um, so Rachel, I think has a question. So I'm gonna allow her to speak. We know Rachel very well. Go ahead, Rachel. Rachel, are you there? <laughs> okay, well, well, let me see if... Okay, we might have to come back to her. Um, but for now, I think a lot of people wanna know um, what is uh, Noguchi Toji's secret to his <laughs> good health and longevity? And as well as like, what are his favorite foods for his sake? あの、<笑> あの、やっぱりじっとして、この年齢で家にいたら、もう、あの、he he told us <laughs> <laughs> he likes uh, fish more than meat uh, because he was born uh, near the coast side of the Noto Peninsula. It's also in Ishikawa, uh, northern part. And he said, uh, I think he thinks uh, the work is the most important things for keep you uh, young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he thinks all the time uh, in his in, uh, if he's in bed, he thinking about the sake all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and working, uh, well, continue working that the job he likes is the most important. Thank you, yeah, I agree. Like if you love your job, I think that keeps you kind of happy and youthful, but if you hate your job, it's a quick death, so. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said uh, he doesn't drink sake. Mm -hmm. Yes, I heard he turns red. I get very red too when I drink. <laughs> All right, um, does Noguchi-san still have time to answer questions? I know we're running a little over, but there are a lot of questions. Yeah, Iwai-san, what do you think? Do we have time for one more question? Um, yeah, I think, I think so. Okay, one more, Ada. Um, okay, it's down to two questions that I'm debating. Um, so let's see. For Noguchi-san, how do you determine when sake is ready to be pressed? And does fermentation change with each batch along the way? どのタイミングで絞るかっていうのはどうやって決めてますか? 
smooth. So he he uh, decide uh, when he tastes and also uh, also with the uh, alcohol percentage and the amino mm -hmm. acidity and SMV and mm -hmm. yeah the both uh, considering the both things and he decide to press. Okay, great. I hope that answered the question. Uh, and thank I you, Ada. Ada San, could I interrupt? Uh, is yes, there a so way to hide Rachel? No, I was going to ask, Rachel, are you there? Because if not, then we'll just move along here. And so um, just to refresh um, what EY San said, uh, Toji San is in the middle of working today. So he's been very generous with his time. Um, there's actually a lot of work to be done. And so at this time, Ui San is going to darken his screen and mute his microphone, but he's going to come back here shortly. So we'll see you in a minute. Okay, Ui San, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Noguchi Toji. Yeah, for, for some, we bow more deeply, and I cannot yeah. bow more deeply than Noguchi Toji. <laughs> you just disappear right off the screen, right? <laughs> yeah. So Ui San will return in just a minute or two, but I wanted to, again, um, thank you, Ada. Mm -hmm. um, it's really great to work with you in this way. And for our audience, we want to mention that we're going to do more of these um, movies and videos um, with mutual trading this year. We're looking forward to scheduling those and planning those. Great. Um, I want to mention that I'm very active on Twitter. You can find me at, at gordonheady.com. And I want to say uh, thank you to Oweno san for being such a great educator. Um, what you do to teach Americans about sake and people around the world is really significant. We're really glad that you are partnering with us. I'm flattered. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So as we wait for you, why to come back? I was wondering if you guys could answer um, another question. What are the distinct characteristics of Noto Toji Guild and yeah. like their production techniques? And like, is it like, how does it affect the flavor of Ishikawa sake? Yeah, you know, the, the Noto Toji Guild are Tojis who are master brewers and they are making sake in their traditional way from the Noto region. Um, if you can imagine a hundred years ago, the Noto Toji would walk from the Noto Peninsula to Shizuoka. And this took eight days. And the Toji would find 20 workers, make this hike for, for 10 days maybe. And then they start working in Shizuoka and then they return again when the brewing season is done. Um, during this time, they became famous for their, uh, their, their hard work and especially beginning with Noguchi Toji's grandfather of a unique way of um, making sure that they keep out the bad bacteria uh, from the Moromi. And they would leave Noto because it was too cold, there wasn't enough work. And so they became like migrant workers, if you will, moving around central Japan. Um, the distinct style is how the Shubo is made. And it's not always the Yamahai Shubo, but that's what they become the most famous for. And the Noto Toji are making the Shubo in a unique way, different than other Toji gills across Japan. There's some restraint. Uh, they want to slow down the growth of the microorganisms at some point. Whereas if you're from the Nambu Toji, you're just going to let the temperature rise and let the microorganisms go quickly, maybe in half the time that the Moromi batch is done. Oh. Here's Ui san, he's come back. Yes. Perfect. Welcome back. So he's in the Shikomi Guru right now, and he wants to introduce the Kurabito. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Arigato Thank you so much. <laughs> Please enjoy our sake <laughs> in overseas as well. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. They're so cute in their uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is saying thank you so much um, yeah. for doing this. Yeah. And uh, so, Yuki san says, Kando sta. So she's very moved by this whole event. Yeah, um, and uh, uh, Ada, I don't mean to interrupt, but I want to make sure that we invite uh, Asano-san to say a few words here at the end. Yeah, absolutely. Asano-san, are you okay? Do you want to say something? Uh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Kumar Asano, uh, owner of this brewery. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, joining this uh, webinar today. And everyone-san, Ada-san, and uh, all of MCC guys, thank you for uh, giving us uh, this great opportunity. And uh, Noguchi Toji is a living legend, yeah? So uh, I want to uh, introduce uh, his sake brewing and uh, his mind, not only Japan, but all over the world. And Noguchi Toji is uh, the opinion in it too. So uh, we have started our sake brewery. Uh, I'm really uh, proud of uh, Noguchi Toji and my Kurabito, who have uh, Noguchi Toji's DNA, yeah? So uh, please enjoy uh, our sake. Uh, you know, uh, the situation is uh, difficult because of COVID-19, but uh, we have to beat COVID-19, and uh, we hope uh, we can see you uh, at our brewery someday. And we are always welcoming you to uh, visit our brewery. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. I, Thank I, you. I, Thank you. I I really appreciate uh, that uh, this whole thing that uh, you accepted that, that our uh, you know a proposal having this uh, seminar and uh, we are really glad to have your items and also everyone it's available in United States now for yes uh, <laughs> it's coming more and uh, so looking forward to it and I uh, Asano San told me. We're going to continue having this uh, uh, Noguchi Toji webinar in the future a few times. So looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Um, before we leave, uh, Hayden says, thank you so much. The event, the event was really educational and please keep doing these. Um, I agree. I know we couldn't get to all the questions today, so hopefully we'll have another event soon in the future and we'll be yep. able to answer them. Um, Yi Song, uh, do you have the slide for our email address? Yes. People who have questions can go to our website, but better than that, because we want to make sure you, you feel welcome to send an email, info at noguchi dash, excuse me, noguchi hyphen naohiko.co.jp. When the brewery is available, uh, we want you to visit and when you're making plans to come to Japan, uh, please think about coming to Komatsu. And when you're making plans to drink sake, please drink yeah. Noguchi Toji sake. And please follow us um, in our uh, Instagram. Uh, we also have an Instagram, so please follow. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. I'm so glad they can email you their questions. Um, and just, to let everybody know so right now uh mutual trading company is carrying noguchi no hiko sake so if you don't have anybody near you carrying it just request it send them our way we'll try to get it to you um do you guys know what the instagram uh handle is by the way for the oh what is our handle i i think if they search noguchi no hiko uh, sake institute it will come up uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure if you if you search it up, it will pop up. Yeah, it's, especially it's, it's Nomuchi underscore Naohiko. Yes, and you can also find it on their website, uh, right here. Okay, it'll be all the way at the bottom. <laughs> they have a Facebook and Instagram. All right. Um, any other closing words from anybody? No, that's it. Okay. Yeah, we're just <laughs> very it, grateful guys. for your time and attention. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you thank you very much. Good, good night, bye. <laughs> good bye. afternoon. Bye-bye. <laughs> good night.